Hey ladies and gentlemen, today we have a Daiwa C-Line 400H that we're going to break down, service, and reassemble for you. Before we jump into the reel, I'm going to give you a couple of things that I'm going to use to clean this reel with. Uh, I'm going to use steel wool definitely on these uh, chrome parts. Uh, a lot of Q-tips. Some corrosion X, uh, just to break down the grease that might be inside there, if there is any, or are spots that there are. Um, and some paper towels so stuff like this I like this kind better than the regular one because that holds up better and soaks up the oil better for me my preference all right so we're gonna jump into it we're gonna remove those five screws on the outside I'm also gonna loosen these four screws around here and possibly loosen this as well All these screws are the same size. And we can just pull this off. That's gonna fall out and that's fine. Let's kind of move those out of the way. And let me loosen this up so we can work on removing the handle as well. loose just taking off the lock nut or screw and I'm gonna loosen that but I'm not gonna move it yet don't know why that's pretty simple that's what it looks like inside <laughs> let's go ahead and loosen this up also and then just get started breaking this down Okay, so for the handle, we're gonna have a few pieces here. You have that uh, that screw or that nut, the handle. You have a washer beneath it, looks like that. Then you can back this off by unscrewing it. Under you're gonna have a cap and a couple of I want to call them tension washers. This might be one piece. We're gonna find out if it is. Yeah, seems like it, or it's just stuck together. We'll get it off in a sec if it's not. We have two tension washers here. They're gonna face each other. Kind of like that. With that space in the middle when you put them together. And then you're gonna have a sleeve and whatever else. We're gonna remove uh, this part so we can access the rest of that stuff and I believe uh, if I remember correctly these two are sorry these four screws are all essentially the same don't need to remove that to get this off we have to remove this because we need to slip that out from under there I protect this so it doesn't fall out so you can see it when it when I take it apart I'm just gonna kind of pop that up now you can push and this whole thing should just come out like so Now I'm gonna pull this out. Just note where that came from. You notice there's a little indentation right there that it's coming from. So when you put it back together, that's what it's gonna look. And that does come out, uh, the bearing that's inside there. But I think it's pressed in, so we just kinda leave it alone. You have that spring, that, and I'll tell you where this came from. That's basically it. Let's set that aside. Alright, so for our inner workings for the gears, we have 
two E clips that we have to remove there. I'm gonna pull this up, see if I can get that off. With any luck, that'd be great. Yep, now we just kind of work at them one at a time. This is a washer um, under the main gear, similar to the pens. Uh, what I did there was, uh, you saw me go in and then kind of rotate that as I pulled up with this because I don't want to put any stress on just two points, so I want to kind of have it even as I pulled it up. This way you don't damage it and have to replace it. To get those two E-clips off, we're going to take our uh, screwdriver, pry at the top, pull our twist off. Just be careful you're not sticking the screwdriver all the way in inside the spring because then you obviously now get the E-clip off when you do it. This should come up. It's not coming up. Now we can get that out, and that's how it's going to look. The dog, same sort of deal. Got a spring. Your dog that sits looking like that. And then these two more plugs. You can get this off by sticking out the, removing that pin that's in here. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but if you had a pin that you could just push that out and then slip this sleeve off the drag breakdown would look like this these actually look kind of okay which is good because you can't really find these I don't think I think I have a couple somewhere The last one's always the trickiest one because it's kind of set in a recess. There's like a little recess there that it just sits in. Which, I don't know, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But I'm not a designer. That's how it looks. Alright, I'm going to cut this cleaned up, come back to you guys. Like I said, I'm going to use uh, the 4 odd steel wool on these chrome parts to kind of clean them up so they look a whole lot better than uh, they look now. Double check to make sure this doesn't separate and also the, the handles are a little stiff. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I would do and I'm not going to show you. <laughs> so, so there's that. Uh, I would add some oil here. If it still continues to be uh, fairly stiff, which one does is not. I would use a little bit of heat right here to kind of break up whatever's locking that up inside. Even if it's rust, it still works for that as well. So, and then it frees it up a lot better. You spray some more of that corrosion X or oil inside there and it just works uh, inside and stays inside and prevents that rust from kind of reforming. So you have a handle that works for a good long time. All right, so I'll see you guys in a bit after I clean this up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is oil this bearing here. I don't want to work this in. You might hear a little noise in the background. That's uh, the neighbors doing some construction. So it is what it is. Kind of worked that in a little bit. And I did not take this off and I didn't show it to you when I took the reel apart, but there's an O-ring that sits around that post or that shaft right there. Uh, you can leave it on, take it off. I'd rather just leave it on and not damage it taking it off. Now we can add some grease inside here. I'm going to just kind of be greasing uh, a lot of things up um, to start with. I like a big slather and just kind of roll it around and then work it in afterwards. And for these gears, uh, it doesn't really need to be exact. 
just need to get it on there. Down a little bit down there. Increasing the pinion. And for all these things, you know, if you know how to do them or whatever, just, you know, speed through the video. But I love greasing pinion gears. And I'm sticking some in that shaft as well, or in the hole. Now we have the jack and the yoke. The yoke, we kind of like to tend to uh, stick a bit more grease in that little you know, cavity right there. Truth of the matter is that kind of just works out as you use it, whatever excess there is. But I too like to put more than I need to inside there. That's one of those uh, critical uh, friction points that you want to try to protect as much as possible. So that's why. Just a light coat over this jack. And I'm gonna stick some of those screws, one in this hole right here, and one along that edge. I'll also do the same thing on the plate over here we kind of just grease around here where that's going to ride and we can certainly stick some in here where that eccentric uh, knob kind of sticks out uh, one more area we can grease here would be this we get ready to put the reel back together we'll need that to have a little bit of suction or hold to it when we put that uh, lug on to connect the reels together or the reel together what else do I want to grease for you guys this this is the eccentric And I think I'm gonna do those posts as well so you can see them. Some in the hole right there where that screw's gonna go. And I'll grease these a little bit as well. Because I'm not gonna grease there. Now while I'm doing this, if you notice that these there's a couple of these posts that have slots at the top. Those two that have the slots on the top will be in the section for the e clip or where the e clip would go. And you'll notice on this that some holes are bigger than others. So they can only go into certain holes. I did go ahead and change up one of the drags on here. Uh, that's because the top drag was a little different than the others, and that's actually a drag I do not like. Um, I don't want to say it's terrible. Uh, I, my preference is I don't. I just don't like it. Uh, so I'd rather use something else. I put a light amount of grease on the outside of this uh, dog. Try not to put any here on the tip. If you do, it's not, I don't think it's that big of a deal. All right, so this is the drag I replaced. And this, you can see what a new drag will look like, as a matter of fact. Hard to get them. Uh, I only have three. So don't, don't be too, don't beat yourself up too much if you can't replace these drags when you take them apart. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I forget is add some oil inside that top and then I'll grease that afterwards. So I'm adding oil here versus adding grease. And then I'm just gonna kind of work that in. Now essentially I'm gonna set this entire thing up when I get to it before even putting it on here. So my first step now would be, or my next step would be to put that eccentric lever in. Now I'm going to add a little uh, tip of, or a bit of grease to the tip of this, so I can kind of stick that in there. And I'm going to stop, leave that there for now. Before I forget, I'm going to stick this ring on, 
just like that. Remember that grease is on the bottom of it, so it should help keep it in place. Uh, but we want that on before we put that in, or put this lever on. But it's a little trickier doing it the other way. So I'm going to take this, stick that inside the hole. Remember I said that hole right there is the one we're going inside. And if this falls out, hey, don't worry about it. It just happens. I'm going to take it and do it a different way. And this one actually did just fall out, so speak of the devil. Hold it like that. I'm using my tweezers here to just try to find that hole. Stick it inside. Push this back down. Now, even though it's out of place right now, I'm going to rotate this with my hand. And then work it back to where it should be. Which is right there. Now I'm going to take this lever. Have it on the back side like this. Rotate it to where it balances somewhere around there. Cover that up, but I'm going to double check to make sure it's still in the same spot. And it is. And now we can screw that in place. We have a washer we're going to put on first. I like to keep it at top first. It's kind of like that. And then we're going to screw this in. I just want to get this started is all I want. And it can certainly pop now if it wants to. It doesn't bother me. Tighten it down. Make sure it still works, which it does. I'm going to keep it in that position with, the, with the, uh, that tip at the highest point. I think that will be better for when we put everything back together. Now we can set that aside and work on this. First thing I'm going to put on would be this piece. Kind of want it this way, I think. And we want that section facing down looking just like this. Now all we're going to do here is take these two posts, the one with the two grooves on them, stick them through, and then add the uh, those springs above them. There's one. You got to make sure that you turn it, turn this until the keyed portion shoots up inside that gap. And rest assured, if you didn't do that or if it wasn't in that position, you would not be able to get those springs on anyhow or those eclipses. Take these two eclipses. We're gonna set them together soon. Or a couple of springs here. I'm gonna take my spring for my dog, and I want to get my nothing else I think we're good drop those two springs on over it one good way of doing this would be to pick this up pinch or push down with one finger pull it down with the other finger kind of like that where'd it go like that and then work it on I'm going to use my tweezers here, I'm sorry, my pliers here to get this on. And that one's set. And the reason I do that is because sometimes if you do it without pushing down on the spring with your finger, you can dig into the spring and it's locked in place. And that's not what you want. You want it to kind of be freestanding. So same thing for this one. And if you did do it the other way, you can certainly check it afterwards to make sure it's not uh, pinching down the, the spring also. Alright, now that's that. Looking good. Now we can take our gear, stick that on there. Just drop this straight down. Do we ever? No, we don't. Put our washer on. Drop the gear on there. Kind of work that in as you push down to make sure it's set all the way. Now we're going to lay our dog over. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to take this off so you can see what it looks like. So it's easier for you to kind of see it. The dog is going to fit inside. 
looking just like that. You want it to look exactly like that. So let's do that first and then we'll put the gear on over it. Just so you have a better visual. Take one end of your spring, drop it over this post. Take the other end, stick the dog over it. And if you notice, the dog has a curved portion on this side. That's how we'll be facing out in that direction. That would be kind of a guide for you, I think. Now we can take this piece, one of these, push it through. Rotate like the other ones. And we'll leave this one alone. We'll put that one in, that one in afterwards. Everything kind of set as we want it. Now we're going to take our gear, stick that over it. Work it down, just be careful you don't damage that pinion uh, when you push that down. And we're, we're going to stick our drag washers in. Alright, so first drag washer drops in, and a keyed washer goes in after it. Kind of so. Then you have your aired washer, and then our final drag washer and final keyed washer. At this point, we can certainly go ahead and grease the threads around here. And we can also grease some inside. And that is kind of how it looks. Now the final step is to take this jack and stick it underneath here because we want to have everything just kind of set up in place uh, from the get-go. So what I'm going to do is take my finger, push on the bottom of that pinion to raise this up, kind of looking like that. Drop this in place looking just like that. I'm going to lock it all the way back. It's too far back at this point, but we're going to leave it there for now until we get it over this post or until we get to that part. So now all we're going to do here is take this, flip this over, kind of like so. And we're kind of where we want to be. Now I don't want to go all the way down because remember that jack is too low. So we're going to take our screwdriver, pop that forward as we push down because we don't want to have it shoot too far past it. And now we're just in place. I'll double check this dog to make sure it's still working, and it is, which is great. And then I'll secure these uh, these three screws first, or these three posts, and then I'll work on the last one. Now another way you could do it is you could have it looking just like this. Uh, remember this was all the way under there, kind of like that. All I did was just pull it out to where it's still under the yoke, but it's all the way out like it should be, and that it more uh, in lines with that post being at the top of the uh, position versus down the bottom. Leave it just like that. Turn this over. Drop this down. Just kind of feel for it as you go down. And we're close. And I could just, I could feel like we were off a little bit because this part was not going down. So now we got to do here is just keep pinching on the bottom here and push that up. And now you're set in place. And we can secure three of those screws and then work on the fourth one. Not all the way down, just get them started so that those things don't fall out. Uh, when you get to the one for the dog, you got to make sure that you're holding onto the back of it because that's pretty much a loose, uh, a loose post to this point. Last one will be this. Drop it in. Rotate it until it drops in place. Make sure they're all flat or flush against this uh, this bridge here. And then just screw it in. Now once you get to this point, you can snug them all down. Uh, you can go to an X pattern if you want. This is more of a flat, um, flat body, so I don't think you need to do it that way. But it doesn't hurt. And again, always double check to make sure your things are functioning properly. 
Uh, if you wanted to, you can set up the spring and this tension knob. I'm going to add a little bit of oil right there. Drop that in. And then I'm just going to push down after I add some grease to the outside there. Then push and put it back on. Don't go all the way down, just kind of leave it up a little bit because we want to leave some room and we put the reel together. And I think that's all we'll do for now. Let's go ahead and jump to the spool and everything else. Okay, so as you see, there's not a whole lot to do to the spool. We're just going to kind of wipe it down. I'll use my brush to get this stuff off. Kind of the same thing for the other side. And all we're going to do is grease certain parts. Grease this with the shoulders. And we're just going to grease the end right here where that's going to fit inside the left side bearing. And that's it. Okay, so for the housing, we're going to take off this left side. And we're going to kind of just do the same thing that we did for the right side over there. In terms of cleaning up and uh, greasing the inside of this. I don't think I'm going to take off the... Uh, I think I will. We're here already, so I'm going to show you everything. Uh, no, you see those uh, that corrosion and salt on that on those screws. You want to make sure you clean those things off when you before you put them back in. Uh, typically, what I'll do is I'll I'll take these I'll clean them off, stick some oil inside the holes, or grease the threads on these screws. This should just pop off, and now I can push that bearing out and pop this off also. The part I'm going to show you is the, um, the, of oh this, the clicker. All right, off with that, I'll get all the stuff cleaned up. Now I get the clicker off, we're going to remove these two screws to get the ring off. Just pop it up. To get that e-clip off, we're going to take our flathead screwdriver, twist until it comes off, and you want to take note as to what's under here. So under here, we're going to have nothing washer on the bottom and rest assured some of these might be different when you take them apart uh, it's kind of a balancing act sometimes when you put these together so don't be surprised if yours looks a little bit different than mine does take that out that's clean we have this like this then you have a plastic washer that's on the outside and that yeah, the software is going to remove those two um, two nuts there and pull this out. All right, I'll get these off. I'll show you how to put this back together after I clean it up. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is add this back to it. And I'm going to use oil on this in a lot of places instead of grease. So I'm going to stick some oil inside these holes. And I'm going to take these pieces and drop them through, but I'm going to grease here where they're going to ride. And I'm also going to grease them. And I'm referring just to the bottom side. Just like that. Drop it through. Now I can add some oil all along here. And 
and screw this down. I want to leave it loose just so you can slide it back and forth. And the same thing for the other one. Alright, so let's go ahead and oil, I'm sorry, grease inside this hole right here where the, the bearing's going to go. Grease here. That's where the uh, click tongue rides. I'm sorry, the, the click button. Take that, just drop that straight in. Push all the way down. There's an o-ring that kind of keeps that in place which I, I did not take off. Add some grease around this. Even some around where that E-clip is going to go. Put on our first washer, which is the larger one. Through the hole, next washer. We can add a little bit of grease to this, uh, to the click tongue here. Drop that down, doesn't matter where you position it. And we're just gonna lock it in place. Now, one thing I do here is I kind of rest it on top of the uh, the pawl itself. Then just use my flathead screwdriver and push it over. Kind of like that. Now we can grease this. Let's add a little grease here as well. Turn that around like that. Open this up, push it over the, the thinner uh, section of it, pull it down, and then screw it in. Now I'm going to go ahead and grease the inside of here. And I'm going to kind of line this thing up. Uh, oh, one more thing, excuse me. Let's go ahead and grease here as well. That's where that lug is going to sit. Kind of want to have a little bit of suction on it. That should help. Now I'm going to line this up. I'm going to take this piece, drop it in to try to line this up so we don't have to worry too much about uh, getting the screws in. And if you line up one hole, the other one will follow because you can just bend it. So either way, it doesn't really matter too much. Now I'm going to stick this on, line those holes up with the corresponding screw holes on the left side plate. Take this, it's going to be looking like, like that, facing inward. And see how it just kind of sticks in place because you put that thing there, or that grease there. Add a little bit of grease around here, and we're going to do the same for the other side. And for these holes, when I get here, I'm going to add some oil to it instead of adding grease. That was a little sloppy and I apologize. Just trying to rush because I think my battery is about to die. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick this on. Rotate it until it fits in place inside that little slot. Then we're going to go ahead and add oil to all these holes. 
and just screw them in. Again, for the bottom two where they support the uh, support the base, we're gonna we may have to play with it a little bit, but one of those screws should go in, and if it doesn't, we just rotate. We'll rock this back and forth until we can kind of get that in place. Don't go all the way down to these screws yet. All right, let's see if we have a set for either one of these holes. We don't, so we're just going to play with it. This is probably the trickiest part, it really is. Because you have a, it's kind of a blind, a blind look to this. And I don't really have a better way of doing it. Just kind of feel for it. And of course, rushing never really helps. See if we can line this one up. And once you get these lined up, it should be easy for the, or easier for the other side. Now, I'm not snugging this down yet. Um, just putting these on. Well, until I get the other part out, I'm not really going to snug anything down. I'm going to pull this up to make sure it's not blocking. This piece, I'm gonna put that in. That looks good. Now we're gonna take this side, add this piece to it. Stick that on like that. Hopefully it stays. If not, then hey, we'll deal with it. Stick it in, line them up, and that's set also. So now we'll take this and fill those holes too. I'm doing the, these sides first and then I'll work on the bottom afterwards. Uh, the bottom really should be in place at this point, but since it's a different section, it may not be. Especially since I didn't snug all these things down yet, so I'm going to kind of play with this, possibly. Nope, it's set. Alright, so let's go ahead and snug all these down since we're in the right position. Alright, and let's go ahead and get the other pieces on, which aren't too many. So put our sleeve in. Our two washers, remember they're going to sit so they have a little gap when you put them on. Kind of looking like that. Now I'm going to add a little more grease here because some of it came off. This is only one piece. And don't cross thread this like I was trying to do right there.
if you need some support you can take your tweezers stick it inside the uh, over the um, over that shaft and it'll squeeze it together or keep it supported so you can turn this down when you get to that point if you want to use the handle you can because you have room or clearance for it now So let's use this handle and then we'll just snug it down a little farther and then we'll add the other pieces. I think that's good. Yeah. That's good. We can see it. Now this goes on, they put it on the uh, the other way. I kind of like it that way better because then it doesn't really scratch up this. But hey, however you want to do this fine. Yeah, it's down far enough. We're good with that. Now we can secure this. If we can find it. And let's go ahead and lock it up. Now we're trying to find uh, the space where That screw or that lock screw can go in. That looks about right. We'll lock this down. And test this reel out. All right, so there you have it. Let's see the free spool. Works well. Engaged. That's the drag. I just loosened it. That's all I did. Feels better. Tension. I'm sure that works. Uh, what else can we check? The clicker. All right, that's it, guys. If you found the video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and. I think that's it. Thank you all again for watching and I'll see you all next time.